Parshas Shemois, Tov Shin, Pei Gimel, and really what an opportunity it is to be here once again in Yerushalayim, Mira Kodesh. We here for the Lakewood Yarchei Kala, and we, we actually finished the Yarchei Kala tonight. What an amazing spiritual high for an entire week just to have so many of the top Magidei Shir and uh, Mashkichim and uh, all the different uh, shiurim and shmuzin and everything we heard here. What a, what a beautiful, beautiful, perfect week. And we haven't done it in a couple of years due to the to COVID regulations and uh, everything that came along with it. We weren't able to be in Eretz Yisrael. So now, Baruch Hashem, after three years, we are able to come back. So we just uh, a short Dvar Torah, our Nesi Shalom Shir, Baruch Hashem, still goes on. And... Um, this week, we begin a new Seder, Seder Shemois. And Seder Shemois, of course, has a different theme, a different theme than we have spoken about over the past couple of months in uh, Seder Bereshis. And really, the theme that we speak about most are the Parshiois of Golos and Geula. And we need to take note of the fact, as Yidden, as Jews, we need to take note of the fact that Golos and Geula and Yitzias Mitzrayim, they have a very, very big chalik in the Torah. And we know how every word in the Torah, every letter in the Torah is so accounted for. And you look at the amount of space that is taken up in the Torah discussing the Golos Mitzrayim, Geulas Mitzrayim, Yitzias Mitzrayim. And as we've said so many times from the Nesiva Shalom, that, and something that we always have to keep in our mind when we learn, especially the Parshish of the week, is that the Torah is not a history or a storybook. Although the storyline may be captivating and interesting and fascinating, but the Torah is not a history book. The Torah is not just telling us about something that happened many, many years ago, and then we put it aside. What we have in the Torah is that when we read about each episode and each thing that took place in Golos and Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim, everything in the Torah is a lesson for every one of us. And not just a lesson for every one of us, a lesson for every one of us today, and more so today than the year, last year and the year before when we lay in the same parsha. There are live lessons, the Torah is alive, and it teaches us lessons for our lives. And for today, in our generation, it would seem pretty clear that Golos is a very, very large part of who we are as people. Kala Yisrael has been shaped by the events of and the story of Golos. If you think about it, it's hard to even say this, right? But if you think about it, most of our history has been in Golos. It's so unfortunate that Mashiach should come today still and before Shabbos, before spending Shabbos Yerushalayim, we should be able to know that Elio Anavi comes already. But if you think about it, most of our history has been spent in Golos. And until Mashiach does come very soon, when we're going to see in this city of Yerushalayim, the Archada Shalt Siyoyim Toyer, you have in mind what you say every day in Davening and especially when you sit here in Yushalayim and you daven shachris, it resonates, Ar chadash al tziyoyim to'ir, that it should be, it should be a light for us, and it will be a light for us. Beniz kechulonu b'mheirali oiroi, that we're all, the Mirt Hashem, going to get to that point soon. But until that happens, we're living in Golas. And of course, the entire parsha of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is a lesson on this subject. And the Pasuk tells us in our parsha, Vayehi bayomim harabim hohein. Vayomos melech mitzrayim. We know the melech mitzrayim died. Vayeyonchu b'nei Yisrael min ha'avoida. B'nei Yisrael, they sighed from the hard work, from the avoida that they've had, they had to do for so many years. Vayizaku. And they screamed out. The Nesiva Shalom tells us that this posuk of Vayomos Melech Mitzrayim, Vayayonchu B'nei Yisrael, is lesson number one that we have to take out to learn a lesson of Golos and a lesson for our lives. 
something that we need to follow in order to make the moves that we do down here and influence what HaKadosh Baruch Hu is, does for us and is going to do for us and how HaKadosh Baruch Hu reacts to the things that we do. And listen to this lesson. As soon as this Pasuk is said that the Bnei Yisrael sighed from the Avoida, the Torah tells us, Vayar Elekim es Bnei Yisrael, Vayeda Elekim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu saw, he took note, and he saw, and Kaviyachal, HaKadosh Baruch Hu understood and knew what had to be done. All of a sudden, why now? Until now, HaKadosh Baruch Hu didn't know what to do. How do we, how do we understand that? We sighed out from the Avoida, and now, Vayeda Elikim, Hashem saw that, and he knew, Vayar Elikim as Bnei Yisrael, he saw Klai Yisrael, and he knew exactly what to do. What was different all of a sudden? The Nesiva Shalom answers, the difference was that the Bnei Yisrael gave a sigh. And for whatever reason, up until now, they couldn't even do that. That when they sighed now from the Avoida, you know what they were doing? They were sighing before, they couldn't sigh, there was a yish. There was not even a ray of hope in their mind. That was the low point of Kla Yisrael in Golos Mitzrayim. But now, Kla Yisrael, Hashem and his chesed gave them that opportunity that it bothered them, it bothered Bnei Yisrael, and they sighed and Hashem took note. The Zayar tells us that Kol's man, they were in Golos Mitzrayim, their Deber, they couldn't even speak, their Deber was in Golos. The Pesach tells us in Parshish B'Shalach, Sogar Aleihem HaMidbar, right, that they were enclosed by the Midbar, so the Mepharshim say, a Drush, Sogar Aleihem HaMidaber, that their speech was closed up. They couldn't even speak. It was so tough. It was so bad for them. They couldn't even speak. And they didn't even sigh. They could not dive into HaKadosh Baruch Hu and ask for anything. And this Anacha says to Nesiva Shalom, this sighing is the Aschalta de Geula, the beginning of Golas. That sigh is your inner, your inner voice. The Neshama of a Yid finally has the Koyach to sigh out and longing, what are we sighing about? We're sighing just about physical labor. We're sighing because we're longing for that connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Nichsefa v'gam kolsa nafshi. When we say that, what does it mean about the Golos? That as Kala Yisrael, we know through the generations that no physical torture and no physical pain can even compare to the pain of being estranged from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And that's what Kla Yisrael was sighing about. The Svarim HaKadoshim say, V'ata'al shavasom el ha'eloikim min ho'avoida. That they're crying out, they're, they're crying out there, V'ata'al shavasom el Hashem min ho'avoida. You know what it means? Min ho'avoida means me avoidas Hashem. That they're, they're, they were crying out that Kaddish Baruch Hu, that they were starving for Avedis Hashem. They felt estranged, they felt distant from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and they sighed about being distant from Hashem. And once they showed that pain to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, like you said, Vayayonchu, they cried out because they wanted to be closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and they had this chance to do it now. Vayomos Melech Mitzrayim, and they sighed out. Why? Because they wanted more of the closeness to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Right away, the Torah tells us, Vayeda Elikim. Hashem saw Vayar Elikim is Bnei Yisrael, Vayeda Elikim. And we know Vayeda is also a Lashon of closeness too. As in Adam Yoda, as Chava Ishtoi, right? Vayeda is a Lashon of closeness. HaKadosh Baruch Hu saw that we were reaching out. That it bothers us that we're not close enough to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So Vayeda Elikim, Hashem understood and wanted to be. Hashem saw that longing, that sigh that emanated from Kala Yisrael. And Hashem understood what Vayeda, what Hashem understood, how much Bnei Yisrael wanted, how much we want to be close, that connection, that connection 
to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And the only thing that was holding us back, that we wanted to sigh long before, but what was holding us back? The Kaishi HaAvayda, the work that we were doing in Mitzrayim made it so difficult, we couldn't even cry out. But when Hashem saw that we had the opportunity, and we cried out that we were longing, that our nefesh was longing for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Then HaKadosh Baruch Hu, HaKadosh Baruch Hu understood what he has to do to bring the Shari Geula were now going to be opened. And this is really the lesson that's being taught to us about the Golas of the Kalal, and really every person for their own personal Golas People go through, everybody goes through times. They feel lower, they feel higher. I, I'm feeling good about myself. I'm not feeling good my, about myself. Golos is all about feeling distant from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And when our feeling is not as good as we want it to be or that it should be, is because we're lacking in that closeness to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That there are times you feel so distant that you can't even make a sound. But when Hashem helps a little bit and the situation does allow you to sigh out, right then we have to step up and we have to say, HaKadosh Baruch I want to be close to you. I want more of that closeness. I want to come back. I want to be one with HaKadosh Baruch Hu again. And we have to take advantage of those opportunities because when you use those opportunities, they push open and hold open the Shari Geula. Sigh for the cloud. You're on your way back. If, if, you, if we sit here in Yerushalayim, and when we say to Yerushalayim, Yercha, Barachman, Tashuv, that we want to come back to Yerushalayim, we're not talking about going out to eat, and we're not talking about, we're, we're not talking about any of the other um, aesthetic things that go on, beautiful things in Yerushalayim, what we're discussing is, is that we miss being close to the Shekhinah. We miss being able to go up on the Makkah Mamikdash. We miss being that close for Tefillah, for Torah, for everything else. And if we sigh about that, that sigh itself, showing a Baruch Hu that that is what bothers us. If we show Hashem that's what bothers us, Vayayonchu B'nei Yisro. They cried out, showing Kadosh Baruch Hu, yes, that's what bothers us. That's, we want more, that's what we want more of. We show Hashem that it bothers us. That itself opens the Shari Geula. That itself brings the Yeshua. Let's keep that in mind. First of all, for Kla Yisrael, for the Kla, so too for the Prat, any person that's feeling a little down, feeling, you cry out to Hashem. You tell Hashem, I want to be close to you. I want to be back with you. And in that schus, Hashem should talk, listen to our tefillahs. Kosh Baruch Hu should hear us sighing out for the right reasons. And we should all be zeichet together. Speedily, very soon, in our days with the coming of Mashiach Tzidkenu. I wish everybody a good Shabbos, a beautiful Shabbos. A Shabbos where you're reaching for Yerushalayim. Where you want to be in Yerushalayim. Where you're sighing about not being close enough to Yerushalayim and HaKadosh Baruch Hu.